y'all be lying. This is R2 C2 Exu Dardivis with a somewhat melancholy We All Be TV News edition. For all the basketball fans, especially Memphis State Tigers, I, I still call them Memphis State Tigers, uh, also known as University of Memphis Tigers fans and basketball nation and world, we truly lost a great man, a humanitarian, a great father, a great all around human being. In Lorenzo Wright, his body was discovered not too far from where I'm doing this broadcast in southeast Memphis in a wooded area. And I like to say that uh, my condolences goes out to the family and his friends and all the other folks he touched through the gift of basketball and through his larger than life persona. Uh, I got my own Lorenzo Wright story. I had to share it. Uh, because you're hearing so many things, uh, positive as well as negative, out there since the discovery of his body, just nine days removed from the 911 call where the dispatcher heard over 10 shots fired and a male voice saying something. And here we are, uh, just really two days removed from the discovery of his body. And um, I like to share my story because I actually have a great story about Mr. Lorenzo Wright. I don't know what happened to lead to his death, but let's celebrate life sometimes. Sometimes we forget about a person's life. You know, that dash between the sunrise and the sunset. Well, uh, several years ago, when he was playing for the Memphis Grizzlies, I had actually saw a tall brother pumping gas into his the first class SUV while well, pumping gas to what could be called whatever, I guess a hoopty, uh, but it got me from A to B. And actually at the Texaco station, gas station, not ironically too far removed from where they found his body in the woody area on Hash Cross. And I went up to the brother and I said, you know what, are you Lorenzo Wright? And he was just a humble person. You think about this guy, well known in the sports world on TV, celebrity pals, all that good stuff. He was very accessible from what I can get and very down to earth. Uh, you could tell that he had a great uh, upbringing, that he was raised well, very polite and humble. He said, yes, I am. And so I, we, I greeted him and I told him I was an artist and all the stuff that I did, you know, book writer, artist, illustrator, and I would love, you know, to hopefully feature some art in his wonderful home. So I gave him my card, and uh, he accepted it. I never heard back from the brother, but he was very cool about it. You know, he didn't say, I don't want to be bothered with. He took the time to meet and greet with people, which is why the way he died rather than the way he lived was such a shock to people. You know, how can a person this nice and this well-meaning, this thoughtful, and this accessible to the public, and so beloved by the Memphis community, for what he done in Memphis State and beyond, be the victim of this type of tragedy. Like I said before, I don't know too much about what's going on. Uh, there's so many stories are flying around right now, but I think it's important that people uh, celebrate a person's life because he, by all accounts, seemed to be a great family man. I mean, if, if he if marriage was on the rocks, he was a, a great family man in terms of being a great father. And I think that's something we all can learn as African American man in particular and, and man in general how to really care for your children and he's like he loved his children by all accounts all six of them all six of his surviving children and so with that I like to say well brother Larissa, whatever wherever you are uh, God bless you God keep you uh, may your positivity outweigh any negatives done in life and may your example of selflessness on and off the basketball court lives eternal. I am R2C2H2 Darkness. And this is a tribute of Brother Lorenzo.